Wow. Well, can we unpack a couple of things that you said that I don't want to overlook? So you decided to close a business. I want to know how you came to uh, that decision to do that. And then you also, uh, that could be like a, a 10 minute snippet in itself, but then also be thinking about, um, you talked about how you kind of did some customer um, customer feedback where you just posted on, you know, some sort of um, Slack group or something like that, some sort of community group. Yeah. And you asked them a question. And how do you really understand or validate that kind of data point to know that, hey, I should start a business or not off of off of something like that? Because I think that can be a pretty, uh, yeah, it can be a scary thing to get feedback when you don't really know, like, are these people for real or not? Yeah. So I, I'm a big fan of the lean startup methodology and I kind of live that and breathe that. Um, the, I'm falling a little bit out of fashion with the fail fast concept because I think that slow entrepreneurship is also valid and important. I think people can take years to build a solid company and you don't have to kill yourself doing it. But that being said, the lean startup is all about, you know, the build test iterate cycle. And when, um, when my company, wasn't going to work because there was a pandemic and I couldn't sell to healthcare. I had to put everything on hold and also I had no childcare. So I had to stay home and I couldn't do anything. I literally was stuck and I was resentful and I hated it. And it was an awful five months until July came around and the pressure to do something just built up so much that I pivoted to um, take the core technology that I was building and turn it into something else. Um, all the while, even before the pandemic, I had been searching for insurance to cover this specific risk. And the risk involved children and child care and not child care locations. So not in a daycare center. Um, and no insurance companies wanted to cover me. And this was this was the death of my company, um, because as much as I could get traction or couldn't get traction or was pivoting to a new business model because my core technology was basically offering childcare without a building. And I could not get childcare coverage um, because the insurance industry was, they were unable to wrap their hands around the risk. They were like, well, what's your permanent location? I'm like, I don't have a permanent location. I'm enabling childcare. I am building a system, a structure, a technology platform. And um, we're bringing the caregivers together with the people who want to hold the care in their location. And so, the the, was um, that the co-working thing at, like the it YMCA? started as co-working and uh, then it grew from an idea to do co-working with child care to a platform for co-working with child care and then we dropped the co-working and then um i had a founder split um oz and i split and so we had to deal with that whole thing which is you know emotional and trying all that um and then i picked it back up took the technology and you know rebuilt into this we were gonna i was gonna go to healthcare. Um, after doing some research and doing some polling and testing of uh, end users. And um, but long story short, I mean, from when we started in 2018 till when I shut it down in November 2020, um, insurance was the sort of thing that I could not get. So I, I did not feel comfortable doing anything with kids if I didn't have coverage for, you know, somebody's randy uncle or some you know nefarious person walking into a building um and they i tried i mean i had i had quotes uh, not quotes i had like applications out to i don't know 10 different companies i had agents in all part of the country working for me trying to find coverage and just kept getting no's so at some point i had said i had to call a spade a spade and that was that was that yeah, I, one thing that I've said for a long time about this area is that we have to embrace failure and not like look at somebody that they're totally strange and a failure if someone decides to shut a business down. What what was your experience when you shut it down? Did did people treat you differently or look at you differently? So I by the pivot, the pivot which was like a last ditch effort to save it. Um, and I, I kept, I was, I had a local insurance agent that I was trying to work with and another guy who had given, gotten insurance for Lyft, like the agent that had found insurance for Lyft, which if you can imagine is a pretty risky business model at first. So he understood it, but I had this local person and I had this guy in Chicago and um, neither one was coming back to me. And at a certain point I, I was getting ghosted. Like I would write a, I would write an email being like, Hey, any news? And no response for like a week, two weeks. And so it was just a couple of months of that where I um, 
I just started to lose steam. I started to lose like the oomph to keep going. Um, and so October rolled around and I was like, if I can't start this by October, then I'm gonna start winding down affairs. And I set November 1st as the day that I would officially stop working on it. And it was, it was just kind of like a slow, like it, it just ended. It, I stopped, I stopped pursuing it. And, um, put up a thing on the website saying that, you know, as of November 1st, I'm no longer operating, but um, I didn't officially close the company until February of this year. That was just because of logistics. Yeah, and that, that's one thing that we talk about, at least I talk about uh, when I help people with their pitches is the fact that, hey, if you're trying to get an investment from somebody, they're betting on you, the person, not necessarily the idea. And the same holds true when you shut a business down. It's not you as a person didn't fail, it just, was it the right idea or was it solving the right problem or whatever the case is? And, you know, you still have. Yeah, I'm still made. That, yeah. And so it's like, you can't be, you know, it's just, again, it should be, you have to try. It was a bit of a relief, you know, it was a bit of a relief right. to, to say like, well, I don't have to have this headache anymore of trying to find a needle in a haystack insurance coverage. And also, um, you know, worry about if, it was always a constant question. Do I run a pilot and not have insurance? What do I do? Like, can I, cause I had people waiting. I had mm. customers waiting and I had caregivers that I had hired, you know, that I, that I had interviewed and they were waiting and I wanted to run a pilot, but I did not feel comfortable actually saying we're going to do a pilot from this day to this day, or we're going to start providing care from this day to this day, you know, without any kind of coverage. Um, so it was just, it was, it was just like, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do this for you guys because I don't feel safe doing it. I've been directly involved within our entrepreneurial community for years. And the most common question I get is, Tim, I want to get involved, but I don't know what events I should attend. Well, Startwheel eliminates that pain point because we consolidate all the events you should attend into a single calendar. Now you'll be in the know and see where to spend your time. Gone is the need to search multiple websites and calendars. Just head to startwheel.org and see for yourself. That's startwheel.org.